Are you looking for a free video editor with no watermarks? Well, Shotcut is a perfect choice for you. I believe Shotcut is one of the top free video editors with no watermarks. And so in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to, you can make your first video using Shotcut. It's a great thing to download. It's cross-platform. Uh, it works on your Windows machine. It works on your Mac or Linux. So let's get started on this tutorial on how to use Shotcut, the free video editor with no watermarks. Everything is going to be timestamped in this video. So if you take a look down below in the description, you can jump around to different parts of the video if you're looking for something specific. But I want to start with downloading Shotcut. So you need to go to shotcut.org. I'll put the link down below in the description for this also. When you get to the front page like this, just go ahead and click to, uh, to download. So when you click to download, sometimes you get pop-ups and everything, you can close those. And then you're gonna notice that you have some different options here. Uh, there's, I'm using Windows 11 today, but uh, depending on what system that you're gonna be installing this, you'll get a different default from here. So you can go ahead and choose to go from the installer or uh, from the different sites on either of these. So go ahead and get that downloaded. The other thing I want to point out is that you might need some files if you don't have any video or media files like audio or pictures on your computer. A place where I get them a lot of time is Pexels. And so uh, I like dogs. I do a lot of videos just showing pictures of dogs. And if you go to Pexels, and I'll put the link down below to this, you can download for free and use these videos and pictures any way you want. So if you are following along the same videos I'm doing, or you can pick different ones. You can go to here. If I pick videos, uh, at this point, you can find different videos and go ahead and download them. So if I wanted this one, I could go ahead, click download, and you can see that it's downloading on my computer. What I did after that though, was uh, just put everything in a folder that I'll be working from uh, in my, uh, uh, from here. So you can see all the different files. I have some audio files. I have some pictures and videos from here that I'll be bringing into this tutorial on Shotcut. So if you want some media to practice with, go to Pexels, download some, put it in a folder and we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and open up Shotcut. I have the shortcut right on my desktop above the media folder. So I'm gonna open that up and you can see how quickly it pops open. So the first thing I wanna go over is uh, making sure you understand how it's looking in the different uh, things the different buttons will do. Uh, you can have this customized the way you want. Uh, if it's not looking the way it is on my computer right here, these different windows where it says things like timeline or playlist or audio peak here, these things can be open and closed. And how you can do this a couple different ways. So uh, for an example, if I go over here to recent and I can click the X and it's gone. If I want that back again, I can click here and if I click recent, it opens up again. Uh, the other place, if you want to open and close these windows, if you check under your view, uh, you can see if I go to, uh, let's say, uh, timeline here. And if I click on timeline, the timeline's not there. I could go to it again and click timeline. Uh, the other thing you can do though, if it was, uh, if I turn it off like this, if I just go up here and hit timeline, you can see it brings back. So different things you can open and close if it's not looking the same way as as it is on mine. The other thing I want to point out, these things can be all moved around. So if I go to recent here and click and hold, you can see I can embed it into a different place. Things start moving automatically. I can even pull it out so it's floating up uh, somewhere else. So if yours, you can set yours up to look the way you want. Maybe you're using dual monitor uh, and you're uh, wanting to put things on different monitors to uh, increase your efficiency. Uh, the other thing I want to point out, if things get all changed around near wanting things to get back to the original way when it started. If I go up to view up here and you can see that under uh, layout, take a look at restore default layout. If I go click that, it puts everything back to normal like this. And so this is where I'm going to start with, with pulling in the media. 
So the first step is to create a new project. And to do that, we can go right under new project and we can give it a name and go ahead and hit start. So, but first of all, you have to decide where do you want this projects folder? Uh, you can see there's a default where it's under mine, it's users Jamie videos and I can click on it. I could change that spot if I wanted to. I'm gonna leave it as that default, I'm good with that. I can give it a project name. So in this case, I'm gonna just call it things to do with dogs, just like that. And now this is video mode. So what it's going to do, if I leave this at automatic, it's just going to, when I drag the first uh, media the video into the timeline, it's going to choose that as the settings for this project. But you can change this the way you want. If you wanted a different one, you could go ahead and hit automatic. And you can see that you can pick different uh, 1080p with different frame rates. You could go to 4K down here. So you pick what you would want. I'm leaving it as automatic for this one. I can go ahead and hit start. Uh, right before I do that, I just want to point out if you have any other projects. So in this case, you can see there is a dogs uh, folder here, file here that if I was working on this previously, I could just go ahead and open it up from here. But I'm just going to go with start right here and I'm ready to bring in my media. There's a few different ways you can open and look at your media or bring it in. And we want to bring this media into the playlist uh, before we start working on it. But you can open and preview any of these videos too. So if I go to open file like this, uh, I could go to that folder and it's already gone to that uh, shortcut media folder. I can go ahead and I'll just open this first one. And when I do that, it's going to show me a preview of that file. It's not in my playlist yet. It's just showing that uh, that preview of it under that source video. Now I can move this in my to my playlist from here by simply clicking and dragging it over or actually I could bring it into my timeline down below. But if I drag it over, you can see it's in my playlist. So that's one way to get in, uh, videos and media into your playlist. I could also go here, click this, and now at this point, I'm gonna just click, I could select multiple. So I'm holding shift down and there's three there and I could hit open and now I brought in three. Now the way I like to do it a lot of times is just going to the folder. So if I open up this folder here, uh, I'll bring my window back open. So this is the folder right here. So if I go ahead and select, I believe I brought these in and uh, these ones already in, I can click and just drag them over just like that. So different ways you can bring the media in, I tend to just drag from my folders over. So I'm gonna just size this a little bit different. Uh, I'm gonna drag it just so we can see a little bit more there. And I just wanna point out, you can change the way this looks too. Uh, if you look down below, if you click on the thumbnails, it quickly changes to depending on what you want. Uh, and this is all based on what you like, how you like to see your videos or pictures in this. Now, uh, the other thing I I want to point out if you go to here, you can see uh, where we could go to selection to remove uh, from here. Uh, we can sort by name, by date in here. We can view uh, from details to titles to icons. And you can also view uh, in, if you want this larger, you can see right now I'm in small. I could go large and it becomes a larger thumbnail like that. So you set it up the way you want at any time if you want to view any of these. So uh, if I wanted to view some of these videos here, I could double click on it and it's going to preview in this source window over here. And you can see all the different controls where I can pause and play or jump ahead or go back in here. I could add a grid uh, to see how things are lined up also. So go ahead, try clicking on some of the videos to see what they look like. If it's a picture, it's just going to show it uh, just like this. So now that you have your media in, we're ready to go to our next step and start adding this media to our timeline. Now I want to show you how you can edit your videos and bring them to the timeline. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. Now the first thing what I'm going to do is select the video that I want to start with. And I'm going to go to this bottom one here. I'm going to double click on it just for the preview. You can hear that there's sound and everything in it. This is a two minute and 16 seconds. So I don't want anything two minute, 16 seconds. I just kind of want a piece from this. So what I can do is drag the ends to a point and end point to where I would like it to start. Uh, so let's say, for example, if I wanted it to start there, and then I could bring the out point uh, to the other side of it. So 
at this point, I'm going to make this much shorter. We'll make it around this long. So now at this point, I can bring this, put this into my timeline down below to have my first clip in it. To do this, I can do this in a few different ways. I could take this and drag this down into the timeline like that. I can add it too. So if I hit the plus here, it will add it to my timeline. And you can see with the arrows here, I can go ahead and click this and this will overwrite uh, what would be below it, but I don't have anything on the track right now. So what I'm gonna do actually is just hit the plus right here and it will add it right here. So I have that clip. You can see it's around uh, 20 seconds long at this point. I can grab my playhead, this little triangle with a white line uh, when I bring it back and forth I'm scrubbing the playhead on this where uh, if I go bring it to the very beginning I can hit play and one of the ways I like to hit play is to use my spacebar so if I tap my spacebar tap it again it will easily stop and start you can preview it up here too and again you can put your grid on it if we are doing some transforming and I'll show you how to do that later you could put your grid but you don't have to use just this grid you could go ahead and change your grid uh, if you wanted more lines on it the other thing I'm gonna do is I want to give it a little bit more room so uh, this is easier to see and I'm gonna drag this up because I can add more tracks to this I just have one track right here I can add multiple ones and there's different ways to add more tracks so if I go to here and click these this menu and I click on it you can see there's track operations I can add audio track I can add video track insert track I can just right click uh, in here and I get the same option so if I go ahead and uh, add video track you can see now I have another video track there's nothing in it at that point uh, you can always undo if I go undo up top, you can see how we can undo and redo. The other thing I wanna point out here is now that I have a video in the timeline that we started editing, is if we look up at the top here, now this tutorial is more about just editing uh, to making sure you understand how to do that in Shotcut and I'm under editing right here. Uh, if I was working with audio, I would ch change it to this one where it opens up the different frames that would be more specific for that. Uh, we have things like color, uh, we have FX, FX here. But as I said, this one I'm gonna be working uh, mainly out of editing. Now there's other ways you can be doing some editing or some editing too. So I'm gonna go and drag another video down to the same track to show you. Now, if I was bringing another video in, I can just simply drag it down into the track without it doing any editing or anything first. So if I grab this one at the end and I just drag it down here, uh, notice if I hover over, it says overwrite, it's gonna take that chunk out. So if I just drop it right here, that video, and I'm just gonna move back my playhead, and if I hit play right now, it went from there, now it placed in this video, and it will go back to the other video. So what we're seeing is the in the timeline is the video that we're creating. I'm gonna hit Control Z now, and that's the same as undo. And I'm gonna drag this back, but this time I'm gonna drag it out front here. So now, wherever you see the green here, uh, you have a space. So in, when we have a space in video editing, if I hit my space bar here, it's gonna turn black when it gets to that part because there's a gap and then it starts again. Now I can drag this, if I grab this, I can drag this and grab it. And I notice how I'm pushing it right in. I could over, I could trim this other video by dragging it in and it replaces it. And it, what it did, if I hit the play now, notice that it even added a transition to it when I just dropped it. And I'll talk more about transitions later. Uh, if I uh, go to it again and just hit play, you can see that transition is just like that. I'm gonna undo uh, to go back. Uh, the other thing I wanna point out is if I uh, bring this up, notice that it kind of snaps uh, to it. That's because I have this snap on right here, the snapping to toggle here. So if I turn this off and when I bring it up, it slides really easily over this. Uh, if I drop it, 
here it replaced it, but then if I overlap it, it becomes that transition. So those are some things if you're bringing in other videos, how it quickly creates that transition for you. Now, what I wanna point out is how a lot of times I would do some editing. Uh, I don't tend to edit in the source window and bring it down, I edit on my timeline. And how I do that, there's three different ways I think about it. I either trim from the beginning, or I trim from the end, or I'm gonna split my clip and take something out. And to do that, what we do is if I go to this clip here and when I'm editing, I like to change how uh, much I'm zooming in or zooming up on a clip. And what I mean is by using this right here, I'm just gonna drag this and you can see how the clip looks longer now. The clip didn't get longer, I'm just zooming up. And what that allows me to do is if I bring my playhead here, it I can kind of go frame by frame a little bit easier and I can even zoom up even more to get things more exact. If I'm watching maybe the audio and I want to uh, splice it at a certain time, I can do that. So I tend to go back and forth with my zoom uh, a lot when I'm video editing. So now talking about trimming, and I'm going to just use this clip as an example. If I have this selected, this clip, and you can see the red uh, around it, all I have to do is hover over the beginning. When I get this showing up, I can click and drag in, in and then I'm dragging it in just like that. And I can do that from either end. So I can short, I can trim my clips just like that uh, a lot. And notice at the bottom, I just moved. You can drag along when you're zoomed up, you can drag back and forth. So with this clip though, don't worry uh, that maybe you think, oh, I took off too much. You can drag it back. So if I click it again and I drag it back, I didn't change the source file. I'm just showing what I'm working on in the timeline. I can always drag back what I want to get to the original one just by dragging the ends. Now, the other way you'd probably wanna do it is take something out of the middle. And if I go to this clip as an example here, uh, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so it gets little smaller so if I go here I can do this in a few different ways I could go and click here and this is going to be where my playhead is split at playhead and notice I could just hit s on my keyboard when I hover over it says s I'm going to bring this back a little bit further and the other way if I right click I'm going to get the same thing split at playhead s so I could hit s I could click here and it's going to have a split here I can show you, I'm just gonna drag this one out. You can see where they split. So if I wanted to take a chunk out of the middle now, if I go ahead and split it on this side, and I'm just gonna hit S on my keyboard, and I made another split, I have this chunk. Now, what do I want to do with this? I can go ahead and cut it out. I can right click. I could just, uh, I could hit X on my computer, on my keyboard, it would remove and it's gone. So I took out a chunk and it just filled the gap in after I took it in. And there was a jump there that you didn't even see because it wasn't very much of a chunk. So looking at trimming, if you're looking at an individual clip, you can go from the beginning, the end, or use your uh, split tool or split tool to be able to take out chunks in the middle. I do want to point out when you cut something out of the middle, and I'll just make one more example. So if I make a couple cuts of a certain uh, place of a clip, I can take this clip anywhere. So I can bring it to the end. So not only remove it, I can take it and move it uh, to somewhere else in the timeline to put it wherever I would like. And then at that point, you can go ahead, uh, you can, with your snapping tool on, you can bring it and it snaps and closes the gap. And remember, if I overlap a little bit, it creates that automatic transition there for you. Now, the next thing what I wanted to show you was working with pictures, like an image. And here, if I double click on this one, here's an image here. And I'm gonna drag this into my timeline and just drop it down here, just like that. And here's my image. Now, the difference with a video to an image, I can make a, a image, like a picture, play as long as I want. So what I mean is, if I take a video clip uh, and I showed you how to add back uh, to it. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this one. But if I go to this one and start dragging, I can only drag so far because the video is only so long. I could change the duration to make it play longer, slow speed or fast, but I can't drag it. With a picture though, you can drag it as long as you want because it's static. So if you want a picture to play for a long time, you just drag the ends on it. 
Now, the other thing I want to show you is a little bit about layers and understanding the top layer, bottom layer. I'm going to go ahead and make another layer. So if I go right click, track options, and I'm going to go add a video track and it adds, you can see video two on it. I'm going to drag another video into this video two track. And I'm just going to grab this one here again. Notice I can bring the video in again and again and again, and I'll just drop it down here. And it's right on top of the other one. If you put a video on top of the other one, the top one is, if you think about layering paper, putting things on, it's going to be the one shown. So if I hit play, you can see, oops, I grabbed the picture there. I grabbed the wrong one. I meant to grab this video here. I just want to make sure I have the right one selected and drop it right over there. And so I'm going to drag it back and just start again. And you can see it's overlaying on the top. Both videos are playing at once. I can change the size of this to do more picture in picture and I'll get into that in a little bit. But if you put one of these videos on top of another, uh, if it was the same size, like this one has the edge cut off, so I wanted you to see behind it, it would block everything. So when you're using your different track layers, whatever goes on top is going to be the one that is going to be the one shown on it. So I just wanted to point those out before we move on. So in my timeline on the one track, I have three different videos and then this picture at the end. Let's say I wanted to change the order of things in here. I just want to point out uh, if I try to drag it to the beginning, notice if I drop it, it kind of took the place of it and overwrote it. I'm going to undo. Now there's a way you can actually just insert it at the beginning. And we use this right here, this option. So the ripple trim and drop. So if I have this selected and let's say if I want to put this clip at the beginning now, now if I drag it, it drop it, it just moved everything out to the right. So that's an important one to know that you don't have to overwrite everything on it. Use this here with the ripple trim drop. The other thing I wanted to point out, uh, since I mentioned transitions already, and they're easy to add by overlapping. So if I was simply overlapping any of these, and you can see if I drag them even picture to the video, it creates these transitions. And it there's a default on the transition, just like that. But you can change that transition too. So if I go to this one here, I'm just going to right click on this and go to properties. Uh, properties opened up this tab underneath of the select of the selection that I made and I wanted to point out so the video there's dissolve if I drop down I can choose other ones too so if I wanted to do uh, barn door horizontal and I'm just going to go ahead and move my playhead so you can see now if I play it we have our barn doors and we can invert change the softness of it so shortcut makes it super easy to add those transitions by overlapping go to the properties and make changes and select the one that you want so now I want to show you a couple more ways you can move different clips around and even bring them in to do some different editing. There's always different ways to do editing from the window up from this frame up here or to the timeline, but I want to show you one more way you can do that also. Uh, now, if I go ahead and uh, wanted to remove the, the clips that I've been working on already, I could take away the whole track. So I could right click, I could go to track options and remove track. So, and that would make it disappear. I'm going to go control Z and put it back. I just want to point out with these, I can select multiple clips and move them too. So if I, I click this and then I hold shift and click the other one, notice how I have multiple ones selected. So that means I can move those around too with the ones selected on it. So I could go back and select multiple ones here and now everything's selected. I could right click on this and I can hit X or remove. So again, try to remember the, sh the shortcuts and that can help you speed things up. Uh, if you want to bring a lot of clips in at a time, you can do that. So for example, if I click on this one right here and I hold uh, shift down, notice that there's multiple ones turning blue as I'm holding shift down. I can drag those down into my timeline and place it where I want. So if I drop it, it just inserted all those at once in my timeline. Now, I wanted to point out some quick ways you can do some edi edi editing using some shortcuts on the keyboard. So if I go to this one here, maybe I want uh, it out at this point. So this 
part to be cut out. If I hold shift down and hit I, that just took it out and it snapped it back. So using the shift and I, and then you can use, if you go back to the end of one and you do shift and O, it cuts it from that way. So sort of like at the beginning when I was showing you uh, from the, uh, the window up top when we were previewing it and using our ins and outs, those are the shortcuts that can help you. Uh, you, you could use it in that window too, or you can use it down here if you uh, want it to be deleted and snapped together right away. So those are just a couple different ways that you can do some editing still in the timeline. So now I want to show you some more things that you can do to your video to make it better. So I just have one clip right here and I'm going to show you a few different things with this one clip. The first thing I want to show you is how to detach audio from video in case you wanted to uh, delete it out of your video. Uh, because if I move this around, you can see the wavelengths underneath are the audio below the video. If you right click on the clip like this and you go to more, there's detach audio. So if I click detach audio, now I have it in two different places. So this is the audio to the video. I could go ahead and just remove it. Uh, and now all it's going to be left is just the video without any audio. So that's how you undo that. So I'm just going to undo uh, and put it back to where it was. The next thing I want to show you how to do is change the duration of your video. So do you want it to speed up or slow down? To do that, if I select the clip, you can see the red is around it. Go to properties and you're going to see this speed right here and it shows the duration. It's at two, uh, you know, at uh, the 216 here. So if I increase this and if I go up and hit apply, notice it got much shorter. That's because I increased the speed on it. So if I play it, those dogs are running really quickly now. If I uh, go down the other way, you're going to see that the clip gets longer because now I'm slowing it down. So that's how you change the duration of a clip uh, in Shotcut. Now, the other important thing to know is about the filters, and I'm going to set up the next example. So now I want to show you how you could create a picture in a picture using the filters in Shotcut. And so I, what I've done is taken two layers here. I have two different tracks, and then with this top one, I'll just hit play really quickly. It goes from this video, and like I said, it will show the top one. But what happens if you want both playing at the same time, like a picture in picture and make this one smaller? So I need to add a filter to this. I need to select the clip just like this, uh, go up to filters. You can see filters are right here. I'm going to select that and it opens up my filters frame. I need to add a filter. So hit the plus here, add a filter, and you can search for what you want. If you have favorites, you can look through uh, all the different ones. You can make more part of your favorites. So for example, I know the one I'm going to look for as a favorite, but if you're under video, uh, if I'm just going to type size here and I get to find what I'm looking for, size, position, and rotate. Uh, this is already my favorite because it's starred. And if I select it, as soon as I did that, I get handles around this. So I'm going to shrink this down smaller. And now at this point, I can even grab it from here and move it to a different place on it. And I can even rotate it by selecting this. So I'll just move it slightly and I'll just move it. Actually, I'm going to move it right here. So I'm going to go back and I'll show you what happens when I hit play here. This pops up. I have two different videos playing at once and I have just two tracks. I could keep adding more tracks and more tracks doing the same thing. So you can see I did it manually by kind of grabbing in everything on it, but the position on everything is right here. There are different presets, but I could have changed the numbers through this. I can reset uh, through here too, but you can use it through these different ones. I, I could rotate and change it at this point uh, and select different options through here. So that's how you can change the uh, transform, the shape, the size, or the rotation of a clip on top of another clip, or do it to any clip. While staying with filters, just for a little bit longer, I just want to point out some of the other ones. There's lots of them to check out. Uh, so make sure you have your clip selected, go to the plus, and since this is a video clip, take a look at all the different things that you can do. So if I was going to look at if I wanted it to blur 
or I wanted to change the brightness of any of these, you can go through and change those just through there. So if I was looking for, uh, let's say crop circle here, so I wanna go this one, if I wanted to make it into a circle this video, I can apply that and notice I get more options with it. Whatever filter I choose, I can change it like this and I can test it out. I'll hit play uh, and you can see it inside of it. I can reset it back here too. So reset to default here. And if I click off on that, now that filter's not applied to it. I do want to point out you can add multiple filters to the same clip. So if I was going to go ahead and add another one, select it, you could go look through, but let's say if I was trying to change the contrast here and select this one, I could make that change also. And you can see how my uh, video is going to change. I can hit play and view it from there. So play around with the filters to see all the different things you can do with them. Uh, if I hit the minus here, you can see I can remove the filters from it also. So you could go back, remove them all, hit plus, adds more. Just make sure the clip is selected what you're adding it to. So I have a series of video clips and some pictures here. This little video is about 26 seconds long. Uh, let's say I want to add some music to it. Notice that there is volume to these video clips here and I don't want that. So I could detach the audio and delete it like I did before. A different way I could do it if I wanted to make sure that anything on that track doesn't have sound, just go ahead and hit this little speaker here and it turns it off. I'll just hit play and now we don't hit, hear anything. Uh, the eye next to it is about the visual, so if I turn that, I won't see anything. This is handy, the lock. If you know things are in the right places, you don't wanna make sure anything gets moved, hit the lock and then you can't move anything at all. All right, so let's add some audio now. We have this top track muted. I'm gonna go ahead and I have an audio track already here that I added. So I just went to track and I added an audio track. You can hit control U if you don't have that already. And now I'm gonna bring in my audio right here. So I could preview it first by double clicking it just like the videos. It plays, I can I could trim it from in and out at the same points and bring it in like I showed you before. I'm just gonna drag this into my audio right here. And you can see that the wavelengths are there. Uh, I'm gonna hit play. So I have these dogs, I have the audio uh, in it. Notice that it's a, it's much too long. So I can do different things on how I wanna edit it. And it's based on the same things that I showed you before. So if I wanted it maybe a little longer than the clip and I'm gonna fade it out at the end, I could hit shift and O and it takes out everything on the out and brings it, uh, just cuts it at that point. So I could do the same thing at the beginning. If there was something, I'm gonna zoom up because it makes it easier to see where everything starts. If I wanted to make sure that I wanted to begin right there uh, without that little, uh, with no sound, I could hit my shift and I, and then it's in that way. So now I have my audio video, I'll zoom back out. You can kind of see it lighting up and I can also bring it back just like I did before by grabbing the edges, just all the same things as the video. So if I zoom up a bit more, uh, some effects that you can add to it and you can add the filters just like I showed you with videos. If I click and hover over the end, notice, see that dot right there? If I click and hold it, this is how I can create my fade out. And if I go, I'm gonna to move to my beginning here. Oh, I'm at uh, my beginning and I just hover over and I can go fade in. So now, and I can make it for how long I want. You can see how it stretches out. I can bring it back and as I hit play from the beginning, it fades in and at the end, it's going to go and fade out. So that makes some nice transitions. But like I said, you can add filters to this too. So if I go up to my filters and I was showing you with the video before, notice when I added the fade in, fade out, it becomes some of the filters there. I can add more. So if I hit there, I can look under audio specific and see all the different things I could do. So if you needed it to be louder, that would be something dealing with gain. And you can search for that and you can see gain volume. I could add that. I could increase the level so it would become louder if it wasn't loud enough. You can reset it. And these work just like I showed you with the video. So that's a little bit about pulling that audio into you, into the video clips that we've created. And now I want to show you how to add some text to it.
So now I want to show you a couple different ways you can add text to your project. So you can add it to an individual clip or you can do it on another layer too. I'm going to start by adding it to a clip. So I have this first one selected and I need to go to filter again. So I'm going to select filter and I'm going to go to add filter. I'm going to search for text here, just type in text. In this example, I'm going to use rich text. When I select that, notice I get the box around here and this is where I can write in my information. So if I was going to say all about dogs, just like this, I'm going to go back and just make it all capital like this. I could go back and decide, oh, you know what? I wanted it to be a different color. I can go ahead and select it. You can see how it changes. I could center it change the size of the box on it uh, and you can take a look just like normal editing of fonts on the left here you can take a look this is just like i showed you before with different positions the background color would change uh, i pick something that contrast here we'll just do this one you can see how it fills in there and i can keep adjusting it you can add presets to this so the preset if i was looking for uh, scroll and I'll put scroll. If I hit play, I'm going to undo or go back a bit here. And now I've kind of created this scroll on it. So uh, you can change your preset and different things on it, play around with the different text. It's very simple to add text to a clip. So the other thing that you can do is add it to a new track. So what I'm going to do is go here and go to my track options and add another video track. So at this point, I'm going to go and I'm just going to move my playhead forward because I won't want it in the same spot where I had it before. I'm going to go up to open other now. And if you take a look there, there is text here. So I'm going to select text and I'll just write uh, dog. Just keep this simple. So for this demo, I could go through and have a preset if I want. I'll just keep this the same. You can see I have a background color I could choose on it. I'll just pick a random one here uh, and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So at this point, uh, it's going to be whatever I want to write at this point. Uh, I'm going to say uh, welcome to my video, just like that. And when I'm ready to use it and put it in, I can still go through and change thing. I just have to hit the down arrow here to insert it. So as I insert it in, it put it in as this right here. So it is overlaying over top. So if I would have went with a uh, transparent background, it wouldn't be uh, all pink like this. So you can make those changes the way you want. I just wanted to show you uh, how you can add it. The nice thing with doing it this way is that you can move it to uh, a different part of the video very easily. So two different ways you can add text in Shotcut. Let's say our video is all done and we want to get ready to export it so we can share it with others. So in this case, in this video, I have some uh, pictures, I have video clips I put together with transitions, I have some text in here, and I've added some music. And now if we look up top, we have export. And I'm going to go to export and we get some options, but we want to choose how we want to export it. Uh, where do we want to export it from? Well, mainly you're probably going to export it from the timeline, which is all this that you've worked on. You can change it though. You can uh, export a playlist, each playlist item or a source, but I'm leaving it as timeline. Now, how do we want to export it? We have these options here on the side and you can choose what suits you best. So for me, uh, I upload to YouTube. I'm going to select YouTube on this. So when I'm ready, I select this. I have it from my timeline. I'm going to go ahead and hit export file just like this. Where do I want to export this to? You know, I'm going to put it right back in that same shortcut media that I have. I'm going to save it back to there. Uh, and on the left hand side, I have this uh, over here. You can see right now it's working through this export and uh, it tells me how much percentage is done and how much left is going. So let's see what we finished with here. I'm going to open up this folder where I told it to export to and I have the file. So if I was uploading, I would upload this file to YouTube and I'm going to open it up just so you can get an idea what it looks like. You can see this looks like it's around 26 seconds. It has the text in here. I'll just jump ahead a bit here because I know it was mainly that one video at first, but there's some transitions in it. 
and we have this video. So I hope you like this beginner's tutorial on how to use Shotcut today. Hopefully it gets you uh, creating some videos here. Let me know what else you want to learn about Shotcut, Shotcut or other video editors. I will put out uh, some of more, the other free best ones out there for video editing with no water marks. Thanks for watching this time on Teacher's Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.